Good Friday morning. This is Brent with Likens Motorsports. I don't know what it's doing where you're at, but now it's uh, here in Kentucky. It's cold and rainy. Not a very pleasant day outside, but I am inside. And we are starting on the build for our 496 uh, Epi build that's meant for forced induction. And we're starting with this uh, BBM block. This is an early block. So I've had it uh, baked and tumbled uh, to get the gray paint off the inside and everything. Uh, it's been bored to bored and honed with torque plates to 4310 bore, uh, a line honed, and the decks have been squared. Um, have done some work inside the oil galleries. Uh, this is the offshoots for your lifters. And I have uh, tapped these down inside, way down inside, to an eighth inch NPT plug so I can run a restrictor. You just don't need a whole lot of oil to uh, solid roller lifters. Um, I'll probably drill those with like an, uh, a 125 thou orifice, which would be more than plenty based on... Uh, engines that I have uh, done that to and, and ran hard and tore down for examination. So that's uh, based on experience. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, the cam bearings I've already installed. These are Durban cam bearings. These aftermarket blocks take a different part number than factory FE blocks. Um, factory Ford side oilers take an F24. Factory FE top oilers take a F33 and these aftermarket blocks take an FP01. It's a pretty wide bearing. So when you put these in, you have to really be careful because the bearing is wide enough to preclude uh, the lifter bore. So when you drive those in, you have to be really mindful and drive them in far enough so that you can slide the lifter in without it catching the cam bearing. Another trick that I do is put a regular number one cam bearing in the front. If you put the wide bearing in, you'll be grinding until the cows come home uh, because it, it'll hit uh, the distributor gear and the carburetor and the oil pan and, and everything. So you don't want to do that. Um, given the early date on this block, I have already checked. Uh, the fitment of the distributor, just drop it down in there. Make sure this cutout right here is in the right spot. I've had to grind on these in the past to get them to fit. And also when you do that, uh, always test fit your distributor first before you do anything else because the gear um, can rub the block or the cam bearing. And you need to make sure that that's not happening before you do anything else. <laughs> This block is going to get uh, the T and D paired rocker system, so it oils only through the push rods. Uh, BBM taps this hole right here for a 5/16 set screw if you want to restrict or plug that off. What I did is I just clocked my cam bearings uh, 90 degrees. So the number four cam bearing feeds the head on this side. The number two cam bearing feeds the head on this side. So Typically, when we're installing cam bearings on a side oiler, you put one hole with the mains and the other hole, depending on if you're on number four or number two, to line up with the passage that goes up to feed the heads. So on this one, I just made sure that my feed hole to the mains was okay, but I clocked it so that there's absolutely no oil going up to here or up to here because you don't need it. Um, so the point we are at now, um, before I do a final, final wash, I'm going to gap the piston rings and check those, and I'm gonna check our main bearing clearances. I've already checked uh, the rod bearing clearances. Um, the pistons are hung on the rods. The heads are assembled, so we're just gonna plug along today, and I need to check my piston to cylinder wall clearance get that done and our lifter board clearance and get that done but uh, our rings are going to gap probably a lot wider than what you're normally 
used to. Uh, for one thing, this is a 4310 bore, so you have that to deal with right off the bat. But the other thing is that we are dealing with a forced induction build with a lot of horsepower. So when you have high horsepower, when you have forced induction, uh, there's lots of heat in the cylinder head and in the top of, of the block. That heat will tend to close up your ring gaps. If, if you start out with a, a small ring gap and you add a lot of heat, then you get rings that butt and it causes a whole lot of problems in, in a cylinder wall. Um, so I always, uh, getting back to my OCD background, I always double check with what, uh, in this case, Total Seal recommends for this particular engine build. I gave him the horsepower that I think we're going to make, forced induction build with the amount of boost and everything we're going to have. And he is recommending that we gap the top and the second rings at 27 thousandths. So uh, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna check all of our oil rail gaps and then I'm gonna set our top and second ring end gaps to 27 thousandths. So uh, I'm gonna get going here and uh, we're gonna start by checking our piston to cylinder wall clearance and our lifter to lifter bore clearance and then we're gonna file some rings. All right, so when we order custom pistons, we give them the application. And Diamond knew that this is going to be a forced induction build. And uh, they are uh, calling for five and a half thousandths of piston to cylinder wall clearance. So I've got a bore mic set up here. And that's what we have. Five and a half thousandths. So I've already went through and checked. Um... In there baby checked all these we we're good on piston cylinder wall clearance so we're gonna um, move on to filing the rings and getting our rings kept all right i absolutely hate filing piston rings but it's done and i'm thankful it's done so i'm gonna move on to checking our main bearing clearances So we're gonna load the block up with some calico coated Clevite main bearings. And it, these blocks are cut for an FE bearing or a Cleveland bearing. So we're gonna use the Cleveland bearings. There's a lot more bearing selections for uh, the Cleveland engine. So we're gonna get that loaded up and uh, our caps on with our main studs and our cross bolts and we'll get our uh, crank main bearing clearance is checked. Um, after, if that's okay and everything's good, I should have, uh, I think I have plenty of bearings here uh, just in case that I need to mix and match or something. But um, one thing I will say about the BBM blocks, the clearance, uh, the cap clearance in between the box skirt, very tight. So um, if you're gonna mess with one of these, I would uh, invest in a good slide hammer and um, what I do is I flip the, roll the block over and just top, top, top until the caps come out. But after the main bearing clearances are, are checked and set, uh, we'll get it final washed and some paint put on it. All right, so all the main caps are torqued. Bearings are in. These are Clevite coated bearings. I've run coated bearings in all my stuff. I've, I've seen it be um, really good against high horsepower and, and that sort of thing. And it, it, to me, it's worth the added expense. All of the main journals are within one ten thousandth of, an, of another. So SCAT puts out some pretty high quality stuff. Unfortunately, with an X bearing, I am pretty tight on, on clearance. I, I would like for all this to be at least three thousandths for this application. So uh, I don't really have any other options um, other than to have the crank uh, ground on the mains. And it's, I wouldn't say that's atypical. That's uh, probably, well, I have to do it quite a bit, I guess, um, now that I think about it. But sometimes tolerances stack up against you and there's just really, when you run a code to bearing, you automatically lose a half foul clearance right off the bat. Um, so... 
that's what I'm gonna do. I will, I will drop that off at the crank grinder on Monday. Unfortunately, I really had high hopes of getting the short block together this weekend, but um, that's not that's not gonna happen. But what I can do is I can go ahead and break all this down. I can wash the block. I can get it painted, and uh, I can get the cam in it, and and that sort of thing. Um, these blocks use uh, a screw and freeze plug, and um, they just need some some pipe dope on them. And uh, on a BBM block, you can use a one inch hex uh, coupler and screw those in. Uh, on a factory block, it takes a little bit different uh, finagling to screw those in. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna get all this torn back down and uh, we'll get the block washed. All right, so we have a clean block and um, I don't know if you can see all this, just a bore brush with the end cut off of it. So I chuck this up in a drill motor and I go through all the passages. And then when I do that, I have a manual pump and I will suck lacquer thinner out of a, a drum and just pump it through the entire block. And you can see, you know, any dust or whatever uh, come out. And this is after the jet wash, obviously. So we get the majority of all that um, honing oil and, and all that stuff off there. But uh, I go back through. Uh, usually takes several rounds of clean cloths and WD-40 and uh, automatic transmission fluid and lacquer thinner or whatever to get these bores clean. Then I go back through and clean the lifter bores. Um, also have smaller brushes to go up and all the oil galleries, and I'll also flush those with lacquer thinner so that everything comes out squeaky clean. So right now, I'm just letting it, uh, I blew it off, and I'm just letting it air dry, and we're gonna get it masked off and painted. All right, so I pulled the all the masking tape and everything off of it. I'm just letting everything dry a little bit more, but I'm gonna start putting the gallery plugs in, and since this is a solid roller engine, I mentioned it earlier, uh, we tapped down under this quarter inch pipe plug for an eighth inch hole. And I have made some restrictors. These are eighth inch hole and an eighth inch pipe plug. So I'll screw those down inside and then the quarter inch plug will go on top of it. We've got a plug here and uh, the typical four plugs back here. Uh, on a BBM block, uh, this is, let's see, I think the top one is your, your main gallery feed. This one really doesn't do anything. I'm not really for sure uh, why they put that in there. It doesn't bypass to anything. It's just a, just a blank hole, uh, but there is a, a pipe plug in the, in the bottom of it that we have to put in. Um, one thing that you have to watch out for is this plug right here. Um, you have to watch and be very careful about how far it protrudes into the gallery. Um, I've had to cut plugs down and try different plugs and do different things, but if you use a long plug, it will stick through and kind of block off your, your oil feed that goes up to, uh, to the top. Um, and it would probably impede flow to, um, all your main galleries and everything too. So I'm gonna get these plugs in and I'll get back with you. You can see it there, that's the restrictor down in there. So those are in and just put a little bit of oil, motor oil on uh, the threads of a pipe plug that go in internally. And that'll make it easier to get out if you ever have to. Uh, won't let it seize up. Sorry, finger is blocking the camera. Uh, on the ones that go on the outside, like on these uh, gallery plugs, they need thread sealant. And we have a painted block, all detailed, looking nice. I'm out of these plugs. I think I have a, a special plug that I use that doesn't go in as far. I'm out of them. I have to order some plugs, but uh, otherwise, We're in pretty good shape right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cam in and uh, get it off my my workbench, and it'll be safe and sound 
since everything is clean and ready to go. Then we can get our cam thrust plate on and we can go ahead and get our main caps and bearings back in and torqued so that when the crank comes back, I can just go ahead and check the clearances and then I'll be ready to go. I can also put in my rear main seal. And this will be our stopping point for today. Thrust plate is on, bolts are torqued. This bolt needs to be shortened. So take a look at that when you're doing your own build. Uh, most bolts that come in um, are, are way too long. This bolt needs to be about 9 16 underhead length or else it'll block the oil feed hole that goes from the cam bearing to the distributor gear. <laughs> Plug our dipstick hole since our uh, Canton rear sump pan will have its own dipstick in the back. We are, I'm going to bag her up and uh, wait on our crank grinder. Then it'll be go time. Uh, after I get it bagged up, I'm gonna get the pistons and rods over here on the on the bench and uh, wash our piston rings and get the piston rings on and get the rod caps separated so that when the crank comes in, it'll all go very quickly. All right, guys, thank you for watching me prep this block and get it ready for assembly. Since, uh, I'm gonna have a little extra time today, so I'm gonna be working on another project that I'll show you in a video later. But uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Some cool stuff coming you won't wanna miss, especially a little bit of this next video coming. All right, guys, have a good weekend. Uh, stay warm. It's uh, We're supposed to get some snow here tomorrow, so winter is coming. Stay warm. Talk to y'all soon.